Like all of you gathered here today, I find storytelling really important. Storytelling is hardwired into us and it's as ancient as we are. Long before the written word, we were telling stories. We use stories to entertain, to encourage, to engage, to laugh, create hope, instill fear, to pass on cultural values and norms and traditions. Lisa Cron, author of Wired for Story, writes, Story, as it turns out, was crucial to our evolution, more so than opposable thumbs. Opposable thumbs let us hang on. Story taught us what to hang on to. That's because stories are powerful. They challenge and change perspectives. Stories build our understanding of the world. Kings and queens used to fear poets for the power of their stories. Stories guide how we think and they shape who we are. Storytelling is transformative. We change as we hear, transform as we read. Stories weave the narrative of reality together. Stories allow us to create, imagine worlds, and the stories we tell ourselves often become manifested in the future. The, pro the problem is we've forgotten when we're being told a story. Within the context of how we relate to land, we were told the story that industrial agriculture will feed the world, that chemical fertilizers increase yields, that farming needs more space, that diverse integrated food production should be replaced by farms that look like factories, because food should be cheap, profit should be big, productivity is paramount, and exporting food globally is critical to the economy, and that this is all business as usual. The world in which we live is a manifestation of these stories, a world in which biodiversity numbers plummet, where most of Europe's waterways, lakes and rivers are polluted, where globally 75% of livable land is degraded, a world in which cheap food costs the earth, where the agriculture that is supposed to feed us destroys the very ground under our feet. These issues described are well documented and have been known by the scientific community and beyond for more than half a century. And yet we remain in an awareness crisis. Many people just don't realize what is happening. They don't know where their food comes from or how they're intimately connected to both their local environment and to forests half a world away. When there is communication around this topic, it's often through big facts and data. For example, I recently read that insects have declined by 75% in the last 50 years. Their disappearance would create an apocalyptic scenario, especially given that a third of our food relies on pollinating insects like bees and wasps. The big facts and data only make it harder for people to really grasp what's going on because big numbers are abstract and they make the challenges we face harder to comprehend. People respond to human stories more than data. Uval Noah Harari writes in 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, Hum Homo sapiens is a storytelling animal that thinks in stories rather than in numbers or graphs and believes that the universe itself works like a story replete with heroes and villains, conflicts and resolutions, climaxes and happy endings. When we look for the meaning of life, we want a story that will explain what reality is all about and what my particular role is in the cosmic drama. So we need storytelling to share and connect a broad range of experiences. When I talked to my mum about the decline in insects, she told me that when she was young and went into the garden, she'd be surrounded by butterflies, red admirals, painted ladies, large whites, and the now endangered purple emperor a multiverse of colors floating on air. It crushes me to think what we lost. I yearn to be surrounded by a cloud of butterflies and instead I think of vast landscapes devoid of insects, the eerie silence stretching to a horizon. That image feels like a crack, a deep black gorge inside me of shame, sadness and remorseful nostalgia of what could have been. Living in an age of mass extinction sucks. If only we'd been telling each other the right stories, stories about how everything we know depends on thriving biodiversity. Like many of you, I've also visited areas full of life, 
like farms that absolutely brim with biodiversity. Whereas you walk between almonds and olive trees, you brush your feet in the wildflower meadow. You hear insects between aromatic plants like rosemary, thyme and lavender. The insects flourish there because the farmer knows that insects smaller than you can see predate on pests and plagues that would otherwise threaten their harvest. And because of the insects, you see corn buntings, larks, sparrows, golden bullfinches flitting between the trees singing a symphony, while vultures circle high above. You feel the rich earth beneath your feet. It's incredible to walk in such a farm. And if you stay for lunch, you'll taste the landscape and the vegetables, the herbs, the meat, the olive oil and the wine. We desperately need to tell stories that build awareness that, is our, that it is our ecosystems that feed us three times a day, that the plants and trees we see are the air we breathe, that our waterways and wetlands are our drinking water, that the hum of insects we hear is the foundation of a food chain. We need stories that help to overcome fear with courage, hope, and the awareness that we can mitigate and adapt to the so-called permacrisis. We have to throw ourselves at these crises with a big hug of defiance through stories of denial, shame, guilt, with the recognition of what we've created, while also sharing the stories of hope, optimism, joy, and resilience, the stories that feed a re-emerging way of being in the world. What future would we create if we all started sharing these stories? If we replace the dread of our newsfeed with what it feels like to watch a landscape transform, how it is to listen to nightingales return to a village, and the stories of community, collaborate, community collaboration, connection to nature, and the possibilities of regenerating our planet. My colleague Latina says that everyone has a story. The same story told from different perspectives allows us to gain deeper understandings of the system we are part of and discover dependencies, relationships, and leverage points that were not obvious at first. Because stories are powerful, and sharing stories is what we're going to do today. <laughs>